Hi again, third dart table video this week. I'm just working out how to do them shorter and faster. Uh, this one came about because I didn't realize until a couple of days ago there's a dark table uh, forum on Facebook which I've joined. Dark table unofficial. Search for dark table unofficial, and and it's cool. Uh, that. Um, join here because let's talk about this stuff but basically I posted this photo and I got feedback saying hey can we have the preset and I realized I'm not really a preset kind of guy I'm kind of a training kind of guy um, let's pop that back I don't know why it pops to a greeny tone but there is there's an edit that I really really like it's something it's an edit I kind of edit I haven't done before and I kind of stumbled across this and straight out of dark table it's epic so let's do something similar. That's a very different edit, but this is, we were going for a 70s kind of style and I think this super works. So let's look at some of the other images in this set. Um, background of the shoot outside my house. Um, this is in, so I just worked out how to use groups and I'm loving them. So this is my Volkswagen Vanagon. This was me dialing it in and realizing as I had models here and getting ready that I had a problem. Um, if you look at this, for example, you can see that the, the shade of the ambient cloudy light is so totally different from the shade of the flash, which is more like sunlight, that I realized, crap, if I do this shoot, where the goal is 70 style with these 70 style houses in the background I'm gonna have to gel my flash and I haven't done that before um, and I didn't have time to try it so I basically got some black card after much not panic but realization I had to fix this fast got some black card and blacked out those windows I had to deal with some reflection, but that was not the same kind of problem. So, great shoot. Um, let's take one of these images and do the same kind of treatment as that other one. Um, these guys are... Hey, please like and subscribe if you like this. That's why I've done three this week. Just because I've got a little bit of feedback that it's worthwhile. If you like the the shooting I do, I am that is Phoenix, who is one of these models, Phoenix Lynn, um, in Denver. This is Janelle, both awesome models. Um, if you want to check me out, this is the best way to follow me on my recent work. Kiefer Honeyford Photography on Instagram. I'm also KieferHoneyfordPhotography.com uh, and I post my modeling stuff pretty much here first. Okay. So let's choose one of these and do that same treatment. Um, it's a ex very exaggerated 24mm wide angle look. There's a bunch of these would do, but let's find. How about that one? Uh, yeah, let's go with that one back there. Let's go with that one. Okay, so I'm going to do some stuff that is counterintuitive to me usually. I'm going to lower sharpening. I'm going to up the contrast a little bit, but I'm going to lower saturation fairly significantly. Exposure wise, I think this is going to work because I'm going to pop with shadows and highlights, which is bringing me into the realm of good exposure. 
No, let's bring it up a little bit. Let's bring it up to there. Um, and I, this is actually the second time I've recorded this video and I forgot shadows and highlights and it's actually a super important part because there's a lot of things about this edit that actually are, are about tricking the eye into things that don't really make sense. I'm going to do a crop. Okay, the creative parts. I'm going to do a super heavy vignette. But I'm going to push the saturation rather than cut the saturation. Now if I was taking a lot more time with this, I would probably do a graduated exposure to lower the brightness of that full down table panel. Because it's a bit bright. There's a pretty vicious... pretty vicious uh, vignette. Then I'm going to do, uh, you know what, let's do some, um, let's do a lens correction on that. Yeah, I like that. Uh, I'm going to do a low pass filter. Why are all these open? I'm going to do a low pass filter. But I'm going to do a blend. I'm going to do an inverted mask. And the purpose here really is to create some kind of faux depth of field. So you can see, if you look at the end of that suitcase, we've created some faux depth of field there. It's kind of tricking the eye because this should be in focus. It's again, the whole thing is a little bit of a, a little bit of a mind screw to the eye. Um, I'm doing, this is 70s theme, so I'm kind of doing something like that with split toning. That's fine, but you see it's still not the same kind of utter pop. The big part of the pop is from this. Now, it's really hard to look at an image. It's a bit like looking at an image and deciding if it's going to be good in black and white or not. Your eye doesn't really see tones of an image for black and white, nor does it really see coarseness and fineness, so working with this tool is really just about a lot of practice um, but if you play around with the lower end of here you're really playing around with kind of the difference between light and dark I don't even know how to describe it you can see it right so this one the second the second one in by pushing that we get this super funkified, exaggerated exaggeration of the highlights. Um, skin tends to skin and the, uh, how do I describe this? So we're talking about coarse and fine. So the, the, the granularity of skin or the texture of skin tends to live around here. So if we go into skin and if we pop this, you can take really good skin and make it really bad. Likewise, you can take skin, bad, you can use this to take bad skin and lower it down. But if you do that, you're going to want to do an inverse filter on the eyes so that you're not softening the eyes. But just playing around, I kind of like a tiny bit of softening that pulling the noise bar does in this style of photo. It's not so much softening as blurring, merging, blending. Um, so that's kind of where that shot went. I don't feel like 
the vignette is strong enough. On an even more, oops, not that. On an even more vicious. Yeah, that's kind of about right. I don't think it's as good of a photo as the other one, um, but that's that same effect. Uh, let me see, let's go back to, let's make that five star, I'll go back to lights table, go my five stars, so that one, I mean it's, oh, not that one, where have you gone, that one, I think it's a better photo, the light is a little bit more dynamic because it's side lit, um, I can, let's, let's try it on some more. Let's try one from the same angle where I'm getting that same kind of light. Yeah, let's try it on that. So if I paste all of the settings apart from the crop. It's kind of working, but of course the vignette is going to be all wrong. So let's fix the vignette and the position of the... And the position of the, the low-pass mask. So if I do that... Delete the original one. There's still one shape. Where is it? Maybe just this one. That feels like it needs a little bit more exposure. those shadows a little bit more. That was maybe a little bit too much. Soften things out with that. Yeah, it's too much shadow, so I'm getting that glow around the hair. But there you go. I hope you feel that understanding something is a little bit better than just getting a preset because this preset has too much going on. Uh, you can see the strip light there in the glasses just above camera left. I uh, hope that's useful. Please like and subscribe and have a great day.